Good evening. I uh, just want to welcome you uh, once again to our uh, midweek Bible study. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're going to begin to, again, like last week, kind of just walk ourselves up to uh, the Passion Week. And so we we still have a few a uh, few weeks to go before we celebrate Easter. <clears throat> and so uh, I'm just looking at really like background material uh, studies that will help us to probably understand uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus uh, from an Old Testament perspective and the prophecies that come from there and help us to understand, just to give us a greater meaning for, for why Jesus died for our sins. And so today, or, or last week, <clears throat> we looked at some things concerning the Passover itself and why why the Passover. And uh, I talked uh, a little bit, and that's kind of why, if you thought it was pointing funny, uh, I, I didn't really think about it, but, you know, you saw me pointing with my finger. And what I was doing was I was pointing to my door back here because when they sprinkled the blood on the doorposts and that's what I was doing the doorposts here and here and then the lintel across that's where they would sprinkle the blood across the doorway or the entrances to the houses for their protection <clears throat> and that's just simply just doing what God had told them to do and so uh, I, I want to just kind of look into uh, the Passover just a little bit about what do we see? What are the elements that they that they participated in? Because if you'll remember last time, uh, they had the roast lamb. Uh, the, the lamb was cooked with everything inside. Uh, they also had unleavened bread. And then they had the herbs, the bitter herbs uh, that they took. Because when God's deliverance was, was at the door or, you know, right there, ready to go, uh, they were they were to leave quickly and one of the elements that they partook of you'll see in the book of Levitic or in the book of Exodus uh, chapter 12 and if you'll turn there real quickly we'll get ready to read that <clears throat> and uh, uh, just kind of set the course for our study uh, this evening so uh, grab your Bible and we'll be looking through uh, the book of Exodus, uh, 1 Corinthians, and Galatians, and to see how uh, the Passover and the elements of Passover can have an impact on our lives today. So um, <clears throat> let's take just a few minutes to uh, go to the Lord in prayer and just to praise Him for, for what He's done and and uh, looking forward to this, this coming Saturday for our uh, yard sale and Indian taco sale. Again, those... Uh, those sales or uh, those uh, the things or the the funds that we receive from those the sales uh, will go to help our church and camps and other activities for our uh, for our church to participate in so uh, if you can be a part of that bring something uh, buy an Indian taco or whatever and um, enjoy Saturday with us okay but let's pray and again let's remember those that uh, have a need for prayer, <clears throat> especially those that uh, uh, we look, saw some good news concerning Kyle. His fever broke this just a few days ago um, in continuing his treatment. Um, and, and, and we just continue to lift up his family. And, you know, I, I just want to give a, a shout out to uh, Jamie, his wife. Uh, pray for her. Um, I know we see her on a lot of the TikTok things and then some of them are quite hilarious, but, uh, you know, I, I know that personally, I, I know that there are probably times it really, uh, it really affects her personally, uh, especially, you know, with, with a wife who loves her husband. Um, it, it's th those things just, just, just drag you down sometimes physically. So let's pray for her as well and, and, the, and the kids as well and those who help with Kyle and his recovery. Um, others that you know of, let's pray for them. Uh, some are, again, are going through a time of mourning, a uh, time of uh, sickness in themselves, and uh, 
and, and sometimes the, the prayer, the needs uh, are otherwise, like financial needs. There's maybe those that, that are looking for work, those that are, they want to provide for their families and such. And so let's pray about those things. Um, I just want to pray uh, again, too, about the situation in the Ukraine. Uh, we have, we, we've mentioned, or I think Jennifer has mentioned a friend of hers and the offerings that we took up to send to them. Uh, there's a lot of Christians there, but there's also a lot of Christians in Russia as well. And so let's pray that God would just intervene. Um, I, I was thinking the other day just to myself, and I was thinking that there, there's no man, there's no man on this planet that's beyond the gospel, the gospel's reach. And that includes Mr. Putin. Uh, um, God loves him just as much as he loves you and I. His grace uh, to him is, is, is extended, but again, you know, it, it's up to him to respond. And so let's pray that God would intervene <clears throat> and uh, show himself strong in this situation because again, a lot of innocent people are dying unneedlessly. You know, it, it, it shouldn't be going on, but it, it, it is. So let's pray about that situation. So uh, in the few, next few minutes, let, let's pray and uh, spend some time praying today and, and, and or tonight and also afterwards when we're done. Uh, so uh, let, let's pray. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for your love for us. We pray, we pray that you just guide us through this time of study and Lord, to just get a greater grasp on why you you died for us and lord the background and and all things concerned that concern around your crucifixion but also your burial and your resurrection lord give us a greater appreciation that we can just live this life lord with that inspiration with that dedication and even the motivation to live life for you Thank you for loving us. And Lord, we, we lift up those needs to you that we mentioned just a few minutes ago, Brother Kyle, and, and also Jamie and her family. Lord, we, we, know it's, we know it's hard. We know it's difficult on them. And Lord, we ask a, a, a moment or a time that you can give her comfort and rest, Lord, and just a, a, an encouraging word as, we, as she goes through her days. And Lord, and, and Lord, just the... the the concern that she has for her husband, Lord, that you will just give her peace, Lord. Lord, thank you for those others who we've heard good reports. We've heard we've heard a good report from about Kyle, Lord, and I pray that you continue that in his recovery process. Lord, I pray for others, Lord, undergoing certain situations in their life, maybe some troubles or tribulations, trying times, Lord, that you would again show yourself uh, as you show yourself towards us in a favorable manner. You show favor unto those that you love and you take care of your children. Lord, we ask that you just continue to do that for us. Lord, we look forward to, again, greater days ahead. And Lord, we're uh, it just it, our, our crowds are growing. And Lord, I just thank you for just bringing people to, to your church. And it's your church, not mine. Lord, bless us this day. Just guide us in our time together. And Lord, as we, again, our final, final thought we had on our prayers is to pray for the situation there in the Ukraine. Lord, we, 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 we put Mr. Putin up on the, on the table uh, for consideration for his prayer or for his, his life and praying for him. Lord, that you would extend your gospel to him. Lord, there, again, it, it seems like that he would be, uh, he's untouchable by any political reason or even any type of military exercise, but Father, we know that your your purposes can reach out to him. And Lord, if he just declines those things, if he turns his back on those things, your love and your mercy, Lord, we ask again that you would bring this to a, th this conflict, Lord, that he's caused, and Lord, that you would bring it to a close, Lord, and just that you would protect the people, continue to protect them, even with the great loss of life, Lord, we pray that you would just guide these people, these innocents, Lord, in their in their quest for victory and even for their livelihood. Lord, I pray you guide it on us this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, one of the things that you'll see during the Passover, there are elements to it. Uh, and like, you know, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago about the need for haste when 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 God 
set forth that deliverance time. They did these things in haste. And one of the things, again, was the preparation, uh, <clears throat> the preparation day. And that will have significance on the day that Christ died. But in the case of the unleavened bread, um, as we approach the Passion Week uh, on the calendar, you know, Jewish households throughout the world will do this one thing that you know that that they all do and participate in. That's and that's removing the leaven from their homes, and so. Um, Living is is much like and, and is described in terms of like yeast or things that cause bread to rise, and it's 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 given a uh, a negative definition or a negative uh, a negative thought in the Bible, because again, when they were told to to leave. They did not have time for that bread to sit there and rise. They had, they had to leave quickly. And so that's why they are told and commanded to eat unleavened bread. Um, <clears throat> and so that's when they, you know, they would take that and eat it and then they would, they would quickly leave. But in the New Testament, there are different usages of the word leaven. And leaven has come to be symbolically uh, a term that describes... Uh, things within the Christian's life, the things within uh, one's heart. And so leaven in this sense is, is again, considered something that's a negative aspect concerning your spiritual life, your spiritual growth, or your spiritual activity, wherever you may be. And so I want to turn to the book of Galatians, <clears throat> uh, Galatians chapter 5. And so as you turn there, uh, Find that passage, and then we'll we'll pause just for a moment to continue this video. Okay, Galatians chapter 5. Find that, and we'll continue. All right, Galatians 5. Everybody's got it. Galatians chapter 5. I want to start at verse 7, because it kind of, the, the context of it, of the main passage is in, in verse 7. It says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It's kind of an interesting passage, but what it, what, it, what it boils down to is something has come in to your mind and into your heart to consider, for you to consider, this error or to consider it to the point of allowing it to 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 germinate in your mind and in your heart it's a thought it could be a philosophy it could be an untruth it could be poor doctrine um, unbiblical doctrine um, several things that can come and what he's saying again here is says, you did you did run well, but who who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? In other words, <clears throat> the truth is here, but something else has come to masquerade itself as a counterfeit. Looks the same, it appears the same, but something in it makes it untruthful. Something makes it unbiblical. Something in that truth is not right. And that's what the word leaven is representing in this particular instance. It's something that causes that untruth. And so, but he says here again, he says, this, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. In other words, there's a lot of, there's a lot of there's, a, there, there's just a lot of opinions out there that can cause people to follow. It can be out there in left field, but for some reason, it appeals to somebody. It appeals to their mental state, their mental capacity, 
And then there's some that are really hardcore beliefs that, that people be begin to believe in. There was one time back, it's been several years ago, I believe back in the late, probably the early, early 2000s, there was a comet. <clears throat> there was a comet in the sky. You could see it at night. You go outside and you can see it going through the, in, in the sky. And there was a group of people who I believe they met there and somewhere in California and they found a cabin and what they did was they, 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 they took their own lives because they felt like that comet was their vehicle for their salvation. Since it was close, they felt like they took their lives that they could go to be with that comet and that comet was actually some supernatural force but yet it was not. So you have that hardcore belief system that engages in some type of truth like that, but it doesn't appear that it's for a whole lot of society, just, just a, a select few. But then again, there's other things, there's other opinions out there that people develop, again, out of an opinion or a thought or maybe a way of society. But let me encourage you, if you're seeking truth, seek the truth of Scripture. I mean, it's right there in your hands. Read it, study it. Everything in what, in everything in God's word, and everything about our lives, can be applicable to what God says. It can His word can apply to us in principle, in interpretation, uh, in its presentation of the way God desires for us to live, and so that's when. Uh, we engage in those things that may, may cause leaven in our lives. But again, he says, <clears throat> this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. In other words, it's not truthful. It sounds good, sounds the same, but it's not in its essence. So be careful what you listen to. Even even on television, there's a lot of different channels. You know, like our like we have Direct TV. Uh, there's a lot of our channels from about 350 to about 400 on our channel list. A lot of them, a lot of them, <clears throat> uh, got to be careful for. In other words, know your scriptures, know your Bible, uh, know what the Bible says. Because again, when you know what scripture says, you'll be able to know what the difference is. You'll know what the falsehoods are. And so make sure you follow scripture. Not everybody on those channels is truthful, okay? Not everybody's correct or has a right doctrine. So, but here he says, even, even just a small amount of yeast will make that whole loaf of bread rise. And what he's talking about in, in, in this particular passage in the book of Galatians is there's a legalistic teaching that's beginning to spread quickly within the readership of this letter. The Galatians weren't just one person or one group. It was kind of a grouping of people in a geographical area. But this legalism was spreading quickly. And it was infiltrating the hearts and the minds of individual believers until the whole church or the entire church become, became contaminated. And when a church becomes contaminated, that's, that's getting to be dangerous. And so, again, this leaven... Is, is any anything like that an untruth? Um, it can be an an impure thought. It can become an impure habit. Um, but it's like it's like yeast that's used to produce fermentation in dough. But it's it's used to you know for for it causes bread to rise in preparation for this baking. And so uh, Again, this is the way God begins to express himself or that he, he shows his grace through the inner working of the Holy Spirit in the verses prior to what he's saying right here. But again, this leaven, these things that are untrue or un, Im, impure, uh, false, uh, can come in and begin to contaminate the whole. It can contaminate your whole heart. I, I've known some... I've known some very well-grounded Christians who took on an opinion of certain things in the world going on. 
and they've taken that opinion and they just run with it and it begins to they, they begin to formulate a doctrine around it that becomes unsound it, it, it doesn't line up with the Bible uh, it doesn't line up with scripture but <clears throat> this particular passage again it's a good one uh, there's another there's another good uh, use of uh, of the word leaven, if you look in First Corinthians, First <clears throat> Corinthians chapter five, if you look at verse six and seven, First Corinthians five, six and seven, it says, "Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump." Verse 7 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. You see, Paul has a Paul has a, a, a just a unique way of <clears throat> presenting truth and connecting it to an old test the Old Testament Passover, which he knows aligns with the death burial and resurrection of Christ and this is one of the one of the ways he does that in this passage again he says purge out the old leaven purge out those old things in other words it's it's a time it's 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 also a good time not not just going to your closets or to your pantries or to your cabinets to get rid of the leaven in a um, how would you say just <clears throat> just in a real way, but it also applies to us spiritually, that there are things in our life that we ought to get rid of. You know, we, we ought to confess. We ought to search our hearts for those things that can cause us to be laxed in our studies, be laxed in our prayer life, um, be lax in our service to God. Um, Several different things. I mean, it's just, just not being lazy. Uh, there's other things, other priorities that can come in and take the place of what God wants us to do and accomplish. Those are the 11 things. <clears throat> but here he says, again, purge out those new things that you may be a new lump. You know, I like, I like the King James rendering of this passage because, again, it says that you may be a new lump. Did you know that you're a new lump? You know, um, we might walk around Sunday and start calling each other, hey, you look lumpy today, but it's in a good way. You know, it says again, purge out that you may be a new lump as you are, as you are unleavened. You've cleansed yourself. You've removed these impurities out or these thoughts of impurities or in, untruth. And it says again, for even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. And then verse 8, he says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Sincerity and truth. When you, again, the application of the leaven, again, illustrates for us that there are things in our life that ought to go, okay? Again, when, when, when it gets down to the truth of Scripture, think about what you go through in your day. Think about what happens to you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit next week about what we or what some of our people uh, do especially during the summer months, that mirrors the Passover, okay? Some of the things in the Old Testament that some of our people engage in, <clears throat> not necessarily evil things, but it, 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 it kind of mirrors what, the, what happens in the Old Testament. And um, some of those that we may repeat, you know, the unleavened bread, especially the bitter herbs, okay? Think about that, bitter herbs. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that next time. But in the passage that, we're, that we've looked at, we've, again, we've talked about what, what do the Jews do during this time, during the Passover. 
uh, again, they go and they, they physically remove the leaven <clears throat> from their pantries or their cabinets where they get those things out. Uh, in the same respect, how can we apply that to our lives? Removal of those things that are harmful to our spiritual lives, whether it be in impure thoughts, uh, impure actions, um, just, just whatever would hinder our lives. Um, there's one particular passage where leaven is also... Well, it's it's used in a positive manner. Let me let me just say it that way. Um, most of the uses, most of the uses of the word leaven is negative, because again, leaven is again related to sin or those things that cause us to uh, be separated from God, uh, impure thoughts, and all these other things that we've talked. Again, they ha it has a, mostly a negative aspect to it. But there's one passage <clears throat> in the New Testament that leaven is used as a positive metaphor, okay? Uh, and Jesus is the one who says it. It's in Matthew chapter 13, uh, I believe verse 33, where he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. In other words, it illustrates the ever-increasing influence of God's kingdom in the world. In that particular usage, it's positive because of the effect of the gospel. Um, <clears throat> we have several things and several ministries that we engage in at the church that have a positive impact on our community. It might not solve all the hunger aspects or things of need in our city there in Seminole, but it is having an influence for some people. For some people, maybe a few, it may have changed their life. It may have saved their life by giving them something to eat <clears throat> or providing clothing for their, for their lives, uh, providing something. You know, they, maybe, maybe they're down, maybe they're... Because when you're hungry, when you, when you have that physical hunger in your life, it's really a, <clears throat> it's really like a defeating effect upon one's life. Because you first, you, you, you realize you just don't have the money to buy anything. You don't have the money to buy what you need to just make yourself quit being hungry. You know, we're, there's several restaurants there, you know, in Seminole or anywhere you know, you can buy a meal for, you know, less than $5, but for some people, they don't have $5, and that's really defeating for them. But they have the assurance, they have the encouragement, knowing they can come over to the church and find the pantry there and find something to eat. And for some, that pantry has become life-saving. Perhaps someday that life-saving <clears throat> availability of that food will translate into a spiritual life-saving Feeling for them as well, but again, in in our in our study for today, we we looked at the leaven, and what they do during Passover is that they they physically go and remove the leaven from their houses, and what can we do? In the same respect, examine our lives, look at us, and find those things that are unpleasing to God, just 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 displeasing to Him, and get rid of them. Remove them from our hearts. You know, I I, I love the the verse there in First John, uh, first or yeah, First John one nine. It says, you know, if if we confess our sins, you know, if we'll get to that point where we know, and when we search and when we find that sin, if I will confess my sins, the scriptures that He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, just be honest with God concerning our shortcomings concerning the things we fail in maybe it could be a bad it could be a habit it could be a way of thought it could be something deep seated in the heart like lust it could be different things you know uh, a habitual I, I oh man this just this just grabs me you know 
and it just it just pulls me in. I don't I don't have any power over it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you can. You can have power over it. Confess it to God. And he says he'll forgive you and cleanse you from your right unrighteousness. So again, several different things. Again, most of the time in the New Testament, we see we see the leaven as a negative aspect, but there's also one instance where Jesus speaks of the kingdom in a positive aspect using leaven as it begins to influence the kingdom of God in the world. And that's what we want to be. We want to be an ambassador. We want to have an influence on the people that we connect with, with our community, our family and friends. And so let's be good leaven and reach out and make an effect in our community. Thank you for joining us. And again, next week we'll, we'll look a little bit about uh, uh, our our. our our kind of like our relative connection to the Old Testament within some of our people and uh, look at that in terms of what we see again at the cross. And so interesting study for next week. So thank you again for joining in and uh, uh, we'll, we'll close with a word of prayer and continue praying. And again, again, let, let me emphasize Take some time between now and Sunday. Put your phone down, turn the TV off, get somewhere quiet where you won't be interrupted. Go and spend a little time praying. You know, we we had a good prayer time last Saturday. And uh, Brother Aaron did a great job in lining that out for us. We had good participation. And that's a good model, the, the prayer model that he gave us. Uh, excellent model. It can easily keep you, I, I, I think I prayed about it hour easily going working through those steps and uh, you know you might thought oh, I can't pray that long get Aaron's sheet get Aaron's worksheet and it'll 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 draw you through an hour of prayer time it's good good exercise you know physical exercise good to go walking or jogging or running or whatever good prayer exercise is is, is taking time to pray and so let me encourage you to do that if you still got that sheet Utilize it, exercise it in your life, and pray. All right, but let's close. Let's close in prayer. We'll, we'll we'll get on for the night. So, look forward to seeing you Sunday. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the day you give us. We thank you for your truth. We thank you that even in the elements of the Jews, as they participate and prepare for Passover, Lord, they seek to rid their homes of the leaven. But even for us today, as Christians, we can look into our own lives and and remove those things that are unpleasing to you. Uh, there's so many things that we sometimes think and then we, we engage in that are, that are just harmful and just separate us from you. But Father, help us to see those things for what they are. And Lord, to ask you to forgive us for those sins. And Lord, we also ask in, in, in the light of the positive aspects that we can be a shining light to those around us in darkness. And that our church can be a beacon of hope, a place where people can come to know you, to love you, and to follow you. Thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.